Hello friends, welcome to JavaScript video tutorials series. From the past few video tutorials, we are trying to understand arrays in JavaScript. In this video tutorial, I would like to discuss traversing arrays in JavaScript. Traversing an array means accessing each element in the array for a specific purpose. Traversing an array means accessing each element in the array for a specific purpose. For example, displaying each element in the array, searching for an element in the array, sorting an array in the ascending order, sorting an array in the descending order, etc. etc. In the previous video tutorial, we understood how to create an array using literal notation. We already know the syntax. We write the word keyword, then we write the array name equal to, in between pair of square brackets, we write comma separated list of values and then we put the semicolon. For example, I am saying here var, then I am writing std names. Std names is the array name. Equal to, in between pair of square brackets, I have written here list of students names separated by comma. So this is how we create an array in JavaScript. Let's create this array guys. I minimize the word. Here I have default.html page. I right click on it, say open with notepad. You can see that default.html page is open in the notepad. It has the basic HTML5 document structure code written. Title is set to default page. In the body section, I have written script tag. I minimize it. I right click on default.html page, say open with Google Chrome. You can see that default.html page is open in the Chrome. Title is set to default page. Title is set to default page. Here inside the script tag, I say var std names is equal to in between pair of square brackets i say ram comma ravi comma raju comma raghu comma gopal so that is how we create an array in javascript and what is an array guys i told you array is a collection of data elements we can store multiple values in a single variable also i told you what happens when this statement is executed what happens when this statement is executed guys? We know that computer checks how many elements are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. It goes to the memory. It creates a memory block containing 5 memory locations. Right? Because we have 5 data elements. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Like this. To this entire memory block, it gives the name std names. That is the array name. And in these memory locations, it puts the data elements, that is values. Ram, then Ravi, then Raju, then Raghu, then Gopal, like that. And we know that arrays follow zero-based indexing. First element in the array is going to have the index 0. Next element is going to have index 1. Next element is going to have index 2. Next element is going to have index 3. Next element is going to have index 4. So this is what happens inside the memory when this line of code is executed guys. Next, in the previous video tutorial, we understood how to get value of an array element. That is, how do we get values from the array? We can get value of an array element by its index. We know the syntax, right? We write array name. In between pair of square brackets, we write the index of the element. For example, if I say std names, std names is the array name. In between pair of square brackets, we write index. So I am writing here 0. std names of 0. If you carefully observe, std names of 0 is ram. So if I write std names of 0, we get ram guys. Let me show that. I say here document dot write bracket bracket semicolon here I say stood names of 0 stood names of 0 is ram ram is at the 0th index in the stood names array so we'll get ram I say file save go to browser and refresh you see ram is displayed like that we can access each element in the array guys I say here document dot write and then I say here br line break i copy this code and 
paste down. Now I want to display Ravi. So what code I have to write here? I have to write std names of 1 to get the Ravi. Right? Why? Because std names of 1 is Ravi. Ravi is at the first index in the std names array. If I say here, file, save, go to browser and refresh, you see Ravi is displayed. Like that, I can copy these two lines of codes, paste here, and then I say here 2, 3, 4. So, std names of 2 gives us Raju. Std names of 3 gives us Raghu. Std names of 4 gives us Gopal. I say file, save, go to browser and refresh. See, Ram, Ravi, Raju, Raghu, Gopal are displayed. Like that, we can access each element in the array. But you can see that if I have 100 students' names, then I have to write these two lines of statements 100 times to display, right? If I have one more element, like for example, Ramesh, then I have to write one more time and say here stood names of 5 to get the Ramesh, right? So, which actually increases the number of lines of codes, right? If I have 100 students' names, then I have to write this 100 times. I have to write these two statements 100 times to display all those 100 students' names. That actually increases the code size. I also told you in the previous video tutorials that if you want to execute a statement or set of statements repeatedly, you take help of loops. We know that loops help us to execute statement or statements repeatedly, right? We have for loop, while loop, do while loop, and then for in loop. Here, if you carefully observe, we are executing these two statements repeatedly just by changing the index value, right? Remaining code is same, only this value is changing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So what we can do? We can execute these two statements repeatedly just by changing this value. For that, we take help of the loop, okay? So I'm going to comment this code. I say forward slash star, and then I say here star forward slash. I say file, save, go to browser and refresh. Nothing is displayed because we have commented this code. Okay. Now let's understand traversing a JavaScript array using for loop. Okay. We are taking help of loop now. For loop executes set of statements repeatedly as long as the given conditional expression is true. For loop executes set of statements repeatedly as long as the given conditional expression is true. Once the conditional expression becomes false, the loop is terminated, guys. We know the syntax of the for loop. We write for, in brackets, we write initialization statements, then conditional expression, then increment or decrement statements. In brackets, we write statements to be executed repeatedly. Now, I want to write a for loop to display all the students' names. So, what I do? I am going to write a code here. I say, for in brackets, first we write the initialization statement. I say here var i is equal to 0. You can see I am creating one variable called as i, initializing it with value 0. Why I am initializing it with 0? Because the index, the first index is 0. That is the reason I am saying here var i equal to 0. And then I say here i less than 5. Why I am saying i less than 5? As long as the i value is less than 5, this block of code should be executed. What I want in this place, I say here document dot write bracket bracket semicolon. I say here std names of i. I am taking help of the i variable here. Because the i value starts with 0, it is slowly going to increment i plus plus. i plus plus is going to increment. Increment the i value by 1. See, first the i value will be 0, right? Then it should become 1, then it should become 2, then it should become 3, then it should become 4, right? That is the reason I am saying here i++. plus plus. How long the i value should increment? As long as the i value is less than 5, up to 4, right? Up to 4. 4 is less than 5. That's the reason I am saying here i less than 5. Okay. And then, here I say document dot write and then I say here br. So, this code displays the elements in the std names array. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh, you see all the values are displayed. I am going to copy this code and explain you step by step how it is executing so that you get the clear idea guys. I am pasting that code here. Okay. So, we have the for loop here. Let's understand 
how it works so that you get the clear idea guys what happens when it comes to for loop of course first initialization statement will get executed where i equal to 0 what computer does it creates one variable called as i initializes it with the value 0 and then it goes to the condition part it checks whether i is less than 5 whether i is less than 5 i is 0 0 less than 5 is true as this condition is true it executes the body of the for loop that is third part document dot write displays stood names of i what is i i is 0 stood names of 0 i is replaced with 0 here stood names of 0 stood names of 0 is what ram so stood names of 0 displays here ram on the screen and then document dot write br what it does it moves the cursor to the next line after executing all the statements in the body of the for loop it goes to increment or decrement part that is the fourth part of the for loop i plus plus i plus plus what it does it increments the i value by one it is zero it becomes one then it goes to the condition checks whether i is less than five i is one one less than five is again true as condition is true it executes the body of the for loop document dot write displays stood names of i what is i i is one stood names of one is displayed what is stood names of one stood names of one is ravi so ravi is displayed on the screen now then what happens document dot write br it moves the cursor to the next line after executing the body control goes to i plus plus i value is incremented by one it is one at present it becomes two and then it goes to condition checks whether i is less than five i is two two less than five is again true as condition is true it executes the body document dot write displays stood names of i i is two stood names of two stood names of two is raju so raju is displayed this time on the screen r a j u okay then br moves the cursor to the next line after executing the body it goes to i plus plus i value is 2 it becomes 3 then it checks the condition whether i is less than 5 i is 3 3 less than 5 is true as condition is true again the body is executed document dot write displays stood names of i what is i i is 3 stood names of 3 stood names of 3 is ragu so this time ragu is displayed on the screen guys then what happens document dot write br moves the cursor to the next line after executing the body control goes to i plus plus now the i value is incremented by one it is three it becomes four then it goes to condition checks whether i is less than five i is four four less than five is true as condition is true again the body is executed document dot write displays stood names of i what is i i is four stood names of four stood names of four is gopal so it displays gopal on the screen after executing the body it goes to i plus plus i value becomes 5 it checks the condition whether i is less than 5 you can see now 5 less than 5 is false 5 less than 5 is false because 5 is equal to 5 5 less than 5 is false as this condition becomes false the loop is terminated and below statements are executed guys this is actually called as traversing an array accessing each element in the array for specific purpose guys first we are using the i variable initializing with 0 and slowly we are incrementing it right i plus plus i plus plus i plus plus up to where when i up to i less than 5 so that is the main purpose of using the for loop guys i hope you guys have clearly understood how do we traverse an array using for loop okay next see if i reduce one element from this place if I reduce one element, what I have to modify in this code? See, we, this time we have one, two, three, four elements. So I have to say here, i less than four to get the output, guys. If I keep it five, what happens? There is no element at the fourth index. We have zero, one, two, three. There is no uh, the element at the fourth index. So i less than five means up to four, right? Stood names of four will be undefined. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh it displays undefined and if I come back here if I write it 4 then it is ok file save 
go to browser and refresh it is displaying the correct output you can see that right so what this place indicates it indicates the total element in the array at present we have four elements so we write here four if i add here gopal g o p a l gopal how many elements we have five so we have to write here five file save go to browser and refresh see now one of the problem is if we have 10 elements i have to hard code here 10 if we have two elements i have to hard code here two instead of that what we can do is we can take help of the length property available in the array objects every array object simply we can say here std names dot length what std names dot length does it returns the total elements available in the array at present Okay, at present how many elements we have? 5. So, stood names dot length returns 5. So, i less than 5. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh, we get the correct output. Okay, I go back. If I remove the one element, this time what stood names dot length returns? Stood names dot length returns 4. We have 4 elements, so definitely we should write here 4. Right. Stood names dot length returns 4. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh, we get the correct output and I'll prove you. Okay. Let me say here Gopal G O P A L. If I say file, save, go to browser and refresh, we get. So this is a dynamic code. Here we are getting dynamically the length of the array. Okay. Now we need not to hard code here any value. Automatically it gives us total elements in the array guys. I'm going to comment this code forward slash star and then I say here star forward slash if I say here, if I say here document dot write and say here stood names dot length, you can clearly see it is going to show 5. File save, go to browser and refresh. See 5. If I remove one element, stood names dot length gives us 4. File save, go to browser and refresh. See, I hope you understood what is the purpose of stood names dot length why I have written here stood names dot length guys. So successfully we have understood how to traverse an array, right? What is traversing? Traversing an array means accessing each element in the array for a specific purpose. For example, displaying each element in the array. That is what we have done. We have displayed each element in the array by traversing each element, right? Accessing each element using the for loop. That's it guys for this video tutorial. I hope you guys have clearly understood. I suggest you people to watch this video again and again. Understand everything clearly. Try this code yourself. If you try and experiment, you get more knowledge guys. In the upcoming video tutorials, we are going to discuss more about arrays in JavaScript. If you like this video, hit the like button and share with your friends so that everyone will get benefited. For more benefits and be up to date, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep learning. Keep coding, keep sharing. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial.